Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Natalie and the team and the band. And, of course, the family, Natalie's family, who's here to love on her and support her. It was beautiful. Great, great, great song. Great performance. So there were a group of worshipers, seekers, who invited a teacher of uh, meditation and prayer to the house of one of them and to give them instruction to really, they were really wanting to go to the next step, to take it to the next level, to have the next experience of their oneness with God. And, and this teacher gave them instructions and this is what he told them. He told them that you must strive to acquire freedom from strong reactions to the events of daily life. And you must strive for an attitude of habitual reverence and the regular practice of a particular method of meditation and prayer in which he explained in detail. The object was to realize one divine life pervading all things. And in the end, he said, you must come to this realization not only in the meditation period, but in daily life. The whole process is like filling a sieve with water. And the teacher went away and he thanked him. And the group started pondering. It's like, what? What's he telling us? Is he telling us we're never going to get there? We can't fill a sea with water. What's he saying? And they, they grappled with the ideas and they talked about it and they wondered about it and they argued about it. And, and somebody said, well, you know, when I go to church and I hear a lesson or I go take a class or I have a fabulous meditation, I'm filled for a few moments. But then a day or two later, I kind of forget. Maybe that's what he's talking about. It's like the sea. It all sort of disappears. Somebody else says... Well, maybe it just, we're never going to get there. Maybe that's what he was saying. But one woman, one woman took this to heart and she really worked it in her mind. And she went back, she sought out that teacher again. And she said, I, I want to know, I want to know, I want to understand what you were telling me and show me how you can fill a sieve with water. And so he took her and he gave her a cup and he gave her a sieve and they took her out to the edge of the water. It was an ocean. In my case, it's a lake way, way, way out, but it's there. But he took her to the edge of the water and he said, take this cup, take this sieve and fill the sieve. How would you do it? And so she took the sieve and she took the cup and she started pouring, right? That's what we do in our lives. We pour. And he says, you're never going to get it that way. She goes, well, how do you do it? And he took the sea from her hand and he threw it out into the water. And he said, now the sieve is filled with water. But this is what he said. He said, it's just like that with spiritual practice too. When one stands on the rock of I-ness and tries to ladle the divine realization into it, It doesn't work. That's not the way to fill the sea with water or the self with divine life. But throwing the individuality far into the sea of divine life, you will be filled. You will be filled with divine life. That is our goal. That is our intention. Hopefully, it's the reason that you come to church, that you come to classes so that you can find a way to be so filled with spirit. And all of the classes that we offer and all the practices and all the tools and all of the techniques can be like putting a cup or you can take the same class, the same tool, the same practice, the same technique, and (coughs) excuse me, you can throw yourself into it. Because it's not until you throw yourself into spirit that you will be filled. Spirit is all around. Paul said in the letters, one of the letters, he said, it's in God, (coughs) excuse me, in God that we live and move and have our being. It is in God all around us, like the very breath we breathe, that we live and move and have our being. But when we try to stay separate from Not that we wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to be separate from God today. But when we have the experience because of our humanity, because we have our patterns and our our, um, habitual 
ways of being that keep us in the experience of separate. As long as we have that, we won't know our oneness. You have to step aside. You have to step into a new consciousness of oneness. And when you do that, then you're filled with divine life. And so today we kick off our fall program, and I mentioned it in the announcements, but I, what I forgot to say is you can still sign up for a group. A group is really the way that you can take this work deeper. This book came out initially 25 years ago. How many people read it then? Or between now and then, lots of us, lots of us read it then. I read it then. I had it. It was a great book then. And uh, Gary Zukoff, the author, came to our annual conference in uh, June up in the Kansas City area, and he said, you know, it got to be 25 years later, and he thought, well, I ought to do something with that book, and, and he said, he tells, he, and he said, you know, I, I picked it up off the shelf. I hadn't picked it up in years and years and years. Makes sense to most of us, right? He goes, I picked it up, and I actually sat down, and I read it, and it was really, really, really good. <laughs> he said, I didn't see anything that had to be changed in it. He also talks about the writing of it. It just sort of was a download. It sort of was, it was just there. So he's put out this 25th anniversary edition, complete with a study guide in the back, complete with um, forwards or uh, forwards, I guess, by Oprah and Maya Angelou both. And uh, we've chosen this year, along with other unity churches in the movement, to take it as a study. And so it's a big book. There's lots and lots of information in it. We're going to touch on it in Sundays. But we want you to come on Sundays, and then we want you to be in a group so that you can go deeper into the study, into the exploration, like the woman who couldn't let the idea of the sieve go. Take it deeper. Take it into conversation. In your small groups, you won't have a leader or a teacher. It'll be like, here's a question in the book. Here's an experience. Here's an exercise. What does that do to us? What is that? How does that open our mind? How does that move us? How does that move us into a new consciousness? The back of the book says this. A new world is emerging, and this book brings its message to you. The seed of the soul will change the way you see the world, interact with people, and understand your actions and motivations. Gary Zukov takes you on a thrilling tour of the new hum human evolution requiring each of us to make the values of the soul our own. Harmony, cooperation, sharing, and reverence for life. Using his scientist's eye and philosopher's heart, he shows us how to contribute fully to this evolution and infuse your everyday life with meaning and purpose. We are evolving. We are continually evolving. We're on the cusp. We're, in the, we're on the cusp, but we're in the midst of a quantum shift. And as, there is, as we're moving to this quantum shift, those of us who, and most of us in this room, who are light workers, who are connected to that spirit of God, who are here to bring the love light that is God onto this planet, it's like we're being bumped up against. We're being bumped up against and life is happening and life is happening in our economy and in our government and in our wars and in our cultures and it's happening all around us. But that is simply a call for each and every one of us to come deeper into our own experience of God, come deeper into our own experience of love and of light. The shift that we are in and it's a quantum shift. They're knowing it in science. They're knowing it in, in New Age. They're knowing it even fundamentally. We are in a shift. And Gary talks about from the old to the new. He talks about evolution from external power, which external power is what we've lived in, right? External power is what brings us war and fighting and arguing and competition. External power is what brings us lack and limitation to a new power, which is our inner authentic power. We are on an evolutionary journey. And one day it will be a quantum ship. So, you know, because we're talking evolution, I had to come up with a couple evolution jokes. You ready? Biology is the only science in which multiplication means the same thing as division. A couple scientists in the group. 
If Darwin was right, we'll have it figured out in a few million years. <laughs> and when you breathe, you inspire. And when you do not breathe, you expire. <laughs> so evolution is happening whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, it is, it is happening. Evolution has happened from the beginning, from the very first day of creation. Barbara Marks Hubbard talks about the quantum shift, shift in evolution and that every time you're on the edge of a big change, there has to be paradigm shifting. She talks about the um, quantum shift from single cell organisms that live in the water into multi-celled organisms like us who live in the biosphere. Before we were multi-celled organisms, the single, cells organ single celled organisms were completely and totally uh, allergic to oxygen. A oxygen, in fact, was toxic to the single cell organism. It was toxic and yet in the stage of evolution when the single cell had outgrown itself where it was ready for the next quantum leap, something happened. It turned out to be photosynthesis and the development of chlorophyll and, and it, was a, it was a creation level quantum leap. We're in the shift between the humanity that believes in separation, the separated human, into universal human, into the humanity that Jesus talked about in his ministry 2,000 years ago, into that place where we know the kingdom of God. We know the Father and I are one. We have the experience of knowing our oneness and knowing that we are love and loved and loving and lovable forever. And we we will come into the place where we know that 100% of the time, yes, rather than the 1% of the time we know it now, yes? Yes, we know it. We touch it. Almost every one of us, we've touched it. But it's time to go from touching it to becoming it. There is an evolution happening on the planet. I found a video. It's not totally new, but I want to share it with you. It's just about three or four minutes long. And so if we can cue that up and get that started. It's evolution. <laughs> but then again, I might be wrong. <laughs> I think that's the best line in the whole thing. The meaning of life is what you make it. The meaning of life is what you make it. But you know, it's, a, it's evolution because it's, 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 we're having children, nine years old, children younger than that, understanding things we've never even contemplated when we were that age or when we were children at all, or we've come to contempl contemplate now in our adulthood. But there's something changing. There's something changing on the planet and it's really, really exciting when we stand in that place. You know, and then we stand in this other place that goes, holy man, look at the what's happened in the world. That doesn't feel quite as exciting to some of us, yes? You know what I'm talking about when you're in that place. But this fall program, this next six weeks, is about taking the study into the journey. So we're asking you not only to study the material, but we're asking you to live the material, to take the journey as Gary Zukov has laid out in his book, one from an outer awareness experience from an external power experience into an inner journey, the seat into the seat of your soul, into that place that we call the field or the oneness or the divinity with God into a place of true, authentic power. The old is power over. The new is power within, power to. The old is about fighting and control. The new is about empowering and love and justice. The old keeps us in an experience of separation. The new 
finds us in a place of oneness. Think about this. I've said this before, but think about this. If you were to truly land in your heart and to land in your oneness and to have such a deep experience that you are one with God, many of us have had spiritual experiences where we've touched it, but if you could land into that place where you knew that every single person on this planet was one with you, that you were one with yourself and your family and your friends and your foes and the planet itself and every living thing and every non-living thing. If you could come into that realization, then there could be no more lack and there could be no more war. Because all war and all lack comes from an experience of external power. External power implies that you're not fill in your blank. Rather than I am. I am. We heard those words first in the book of Mo not the book of Moses, in Moses in the book of Exodus. I am God. And Moses said to God, what shall I call you? Uh, I am that I am. I am. When we come into the alignment that we are love and light and enough and worthy, that we are on a spiritual journey, that we are in the right place at the right time, that we are a significant part of our universe, everything changes. And it might not change on the outer, but it changes on the inner. When we come into the place where we move beyond our five senses into the awareness that we are multisensorial. One of the, the shifts that we're making is from the mental realm, which is in which unity was, was built, unity was founded, unity was, was a part of the, the new quantum, lip, quantum shift, quantum leap into the mental science. And so much of what we learned and so much of what we do in unity utilizes that science, and yet we're being called to yet another quantum leap, and that's into the vibrational realm. It's not so much what we think, it is what we be. It is what we be, what we be vibrationally, what we be, because we can say things that aren't true, and right now, in this leap, we know that they're not true. Did you ever meet anybody? <laughs> Did you ever talk to me in the last couple of weeks? And then you say, how are you? And I say, I'm fine. And you're like, yeah, right. <laughs> Did you ever meet anybody whose words was incongruent with the energy that they were putting off? It's not wrong, it's not bad, it's not a judgment, but what we're being called into is to bring those into alignment, to bring the truth of our being, to bring our heart, to come into that field that is the Christ presence, that is the Christ within us, to come into that place, to land in the kingdom, the experience of God, and from that place, speak our truth. From that place, we cannot even say the words, I'm sick, I'm broke, I'm broken. We can't say it because it's not true. Now, even when we have our life situation, our life circumstances that looks like we're sick and broke and broken, that's not the truth of who we are. So we have to come into the place. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the experience of God. Jesus said, it's not I, but the Father within who does the work. Emily Cady, one of our basic teachers, uh, fundamental teachers, talks about the difference between personality and individuality. In uh, Gary's book, he talks about the difference between personality and soul. Personality is our stuff. It's our humanity. It's what we look like. It's what we think. It's the job. It's the, it's the family. It's, it's life on planet Earth. But when we come into the realization of our soul, the personality then becomes subservient to the soul. And so we're not trying to get rid of the personality, but we are wanting to make it come into alignment with the truth of who we're here to be, that Christ presence within us, the soul of who we are, the individuality which is God expressing in us and through us and as us. And so this six-week journey, and I so hope you play, I so hope you play,
is about coming into a deeper alignment with the truth of who we are, coming into a deeper awareness of our heart and soul, and allowing that to bring us into a greater expression of our personality, of our purpose, of our presence on planet Earth. Feel into that. Feel into that and ask yourself if you're ready. Are you ready to really go for it? I mean, many of us have been in this church or been in unity a long, long time. But are we ready to take the next leap? Are we ready to make the next commitment? Not to me or to Rob or to your spouse, but to the heart of your own being, to God. Because this is a planetary shift and we are on the cusp of it and we are on the leading edge of it and we can take this shift. We can be the ones that we're waiting on, but it starts right here in this room and it starts right here in your own life, in your own life. And it starts by putting God first. Seek first the kingdom of God in all things. Make a commitment to your spiritual study, to your own spiritual journey for the next six weeks. If you don't like it after then, you can step back off the commitment. It's all right. But make a commitment and see what happens between now and the middle of November. What if, what if your life got a little bit better? What if your life got a little bit easier? What if you could stand in the challenges that life is giving you with a deeper conviction that God is present? What if you could stand in everything knowing that you are one with God and that nothing is wrong and that you are God expressing individually as you and that is enough for the world? What if you knew it in your heart of hearts? What if you knew it and it changed your life and it changed the world? Would you do it? One, two, three. <laughs> Gary Zukoff says this, no understanding of evolution is adequate that does not have as its core that we are on a journey toward authentic power. And that authentic empowerment is the goal of our evolutionary process and the purpose of our being. Our affirmation for this week in the study groups is I commit to making my spiritual growth my highest priority. Let me take one of those my's out. I commit to making spiritual growth my highest priority. Together, I commit to making spiritual growth my highest priority. Now say it in your heart of hearts, just quiet. Together, I commit to making spiritual growth my highest priority. And now together, out loud. I commit to making spiritual growth my highest priority. And as we do so, our world will change. God bless you. Amen.